Tom Kershaw for Raps on TV and I'm delighted to be joined today by former IBF featherweight and IBO super featherweight champion of the world, Billy Dibb. Thanks very much for giving us some of your time, Billy. Uh, thank you for having me, I appreciate it. So firstly, you've recently teamed up with Robert Garcia. How did that relationship start and what do you think he's added to your game? Well basically what happened was is that I, uh, you know, I I'd sort of come to a point in my career where I felt that I needed a change. And um, I spoke to Russell Peters, who's a very close friend of mine, and Russell mentioned, why don't you speak to Robert Garcia? And I was like, oh, look, I don't know whether he'd be interested. He said, well, listen, I'll give you his phone number. Why don't you give him a call? So I contacted Robert, and, uh, you know, I sent him some footage of some previous fights. And he liked what he saw, and he thought that I might have something left in the tank, and he asked me to come over and do a camp. That's what I did, and we hit it off, and, you know, the relationship really blossomed, and we get along really well, and, you know, he's, He's definitely uh, been a punch factor for me at, the, at this stage of my career. Um, you know, just to be able to be here in the gym with uh, the likes of Monty Garcia, Abner Marez, Jose Lopez, all these up and coming champions who are, you know, real hungry. The sparring has been fantastic, so I feel like I'm in great, great shape. Yeah, it must be really great. And you're going to be having your first fight with Robert against Yardley Suarez on the undercard of Brona Garcia in just over a week from now. How much do you know about him and the challenges yeah. he'll bring? Look, we, we know that he's uh, just a tough guy. He's a Mexican. He comes with a record of 22 wins and eight losses. Um, it, it seems like every time he's sort of ventured to the US, he's got beat. So, you know, we're, we're obviously uh, preparing for a tough fight, but we hope to make it as easy as possible. You know, it's, I'd, I'd like to score a knockout as it'd be my first knockout in 10 fights in the US. So that, that'd be something special. Yeah, that'd be great. And I mean, I've got to ask you for your take on the main event, because that's going to be a great fight as well. How do you see that playing out? Look, I think it's going to be a fantastic fight, to be honest. But I think uh, you, you'll see that Adrian Brenner will, will have come very, very prepared, knowing that his career is on the line. But I feel that um, uh, being around Mike and his professionalism has been second to none. You know, he's worked extremely hard. He's put in the hard yards. And I think that on July 29th, um, you know, you're going to see uh, Mikey shine as he always does. He always finds a way to win, and uh, I don't think on the 29th will be anything different. Yeah, we're all really looking forward to it. And, I mean, I know you won't want to look past your next your fight with Suarez, but there were a lot of rumours circulating you were initially going to face Tevin Farmer. What's the situation now with that fight? Well, the, well, the situation with the Tarzan Farmer fight was that I was willing to fight Farmer on this show. But uh, unfortunately, he was injured and wasn't able to, um, you know, wasn't able to participate in the card. So I contacted the IBF through my uh, my uh, advisor, Sean Gibbons, and Sean spoke to the IBF and explained to him the situation. They gave me an exemption to fight. They've kept me in number three in the world. But from what I've heard now, that um, Tavon Farmer is going to be fighting somebody else in their eliminator for the number one spot. And I'm, I'm I'm happy to just wait wait around and see how things unfold. But you know, I'm sure that in the not too distant future, you guys are going to see me in a very, very uh, special fight. Yeah, everyone's looking forward to that one. That should be good. And uh, another person who's called you out recently is your fellow countryman, George Cambosis Jr., who campaigns at lightweight. What's your opinion on him, and do you see that as a future matchup? No, I don't see it as a future matchup. I, uh, I think uh, basically what George Cambosis is trying to do is just trying to build a profile off my name. He's yet to achieve anything in the sport, you know. He's won a couple of these Mickey Mouse titles, and yeah. he's done nothing special. But he's done nothing special at all, you know. And uh, what, what 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 really worries me is that he doesn't understand the difference between uh, lightweight and super featherweight, you know. And he's the one calling me out. So if he does want to take, if he does want to do that fight, well, I'm, I have no plans on moving up to lightweight at this stage of my career. I, I feel very comfortable at super featherweight. So I mean, if he feels like. You know, he wants to get it done, and he's yeah. going to have to lose that way and come to Super Featherweight, but I don't think that happens. So, at the end of the day, look, it's, it's just a young kid trying to build his name off my name, and that's all it is. Yeah, and I mean, I mean you're ranked at number three with the IBF, like you said, so you're, so you're looking at bigger things at the moment. What do you think of the other champions at 130, and is there any particular route you're targeting outside of the IBF route? Well, look, I think it's a very competitive division. You know, you've got Javante Davis with the IBF, 
got Vasily Lemachenko with the WBO, you got Corrales with the WBA, and then you got Belcher with the WBC. So it's a very, very strong division. I think it's probably stronger than it has been in a long, long time. You know. So yeah, it's definitely no, stacked at no the moment. No road will be an easy road. I feel that um, every champion has um, his pluses and his minuses, but definitely I think the most talented out of the bunch is that Vasily Lemachenko. And, uh, you know, after that comes, I think, um, uh, comes uh, Javante Davis, then you got built in, then I think it's Corrales. But, you know, I definitely love, love to, um, you know, I'm just going to sit down and wait, wait and see how it all pans out. But, you know, if, if I could have one of the champions at the moment, I'd definitely look to face the WBA champion in Corrales. I think that would be the easiest road for me. Yeah, I mean, that would be a great fight as well. And I, I'm sure you'll get a shot soon. Going right back to near the beginning of your career, you first came over to the US to train with Mike Tyson back in 2006, and you met Shane Mosley there as well. That must have been a really great experience. Oh, yeah, look, I've had some great experiences. You know, I've shared, I've shared some time with um, some really, really great people and beautiful people in the saying that um, Prince Nassim Ahmed, you know, I got, time, I got uh, the chance to spend some time with the late Arturo Gatti, and then I rubbed shoulders with Mike Tyson. You know, Shane Mosley, Austin De La Hoya, Bernard Hopkins. I've built great relationships with these people. And, um, you know, these are relationships that still live till today. You know, Nas, Prince Nassim and I are still very, very close. And we consider ourselves brothers. I was actually in the UK not long ago with Nas for, for a good month. So uh, things are very, very exciting in my life. And I'm very happy with the, thing, the way things have unfolded. And the experiences that I've had from the sport has truly been a blessing. Yeah, I mean, they're all, they're all real legends of the sport as well. No doubt, no doubt about that. And then you became featherweight, IBF featherweight champion in 2011, and then you had a bit of a problem when you signed with 50 Cent and you guys had a bit of a public fallout. Can you tell us a bit about what happened there? Well, look, basically, I, I, uh, I signed the contract with TMT Promotion. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, during the time that 50 and uh, Floyd were going through their beef or whatever it was, I got caught up in the middle of it and then I was both yanking from this side and the other side and in the end it was it came down to I had taken the bonus and I had taken some gifts from fifty cent and I wasn't able to get out of the uh get out of the contract anymore so I was forced to stay with fifty cent. And unfortunately for me he knew nothing about the sport of boxing and basically destroyed what I had worked so hard for at that time. And you know, he um he he just he just had no idea about the sport of boxing and you know at the end of the day, he put me in the ring. Um, you know, it was my job to win the fight, but I got beat. That's the way it goes. But there's a lot of things that you know that happen behind behind closed doors that someday I will reveal in a book or in a documentary. But you know, Fifty Cent did the wrong thing by me, and a lot of other fighters, such as Gambolo, Durrell. Uh, you know, but it's a learning experience, and, and that's what God had written for me, and I accept what God has written. Yeah, and I mean, as you touched on, it was unfortunate you lost the title to Evgeny Gradovich. Do you think that had a big effect on you as a fighter at the time? Definitely, it definitely did. You know, it affected me a lot. Um, you know, I didn't really know much about Gradovich at the time. It was sort of a fight that was taken on uh, short notice. It was taken on four weeks' notice. I'd been preparing for Louis Franco, and then I was preparing for another um, Argentinian kid. And, you know, it was just a complete disaster in the end. In the end, it was uh, actually money that put me back in the ring because I, I was running low on funds and I needed, I needed money. So, you know, unfortunately, when you're fighting for money, I don't think uh, that's a good formula. Yeah, no. I mean, you've got to have your heart completely in it. And, uh, Wolf, I mean, being an Aussie, I've got to ask you about the Jeff Horn Pacquiao fight. What did you make of that and did the result surprise you? I, I felt that um, uh, Jeff Moore fought, fought a very, very tough fight. You know, he, he made it a rough and rugged fight. You know, uh, I don't feel Manny had any answers for what Jeff was doing. It was, I, I feel like Jeff mugged him, you know. He mugged him. He yeah. fought a really rough fight. You know, I, I, I sort of feel that Manny wasn't prepared for that type of a fight. He, he I don't think he prepared as well as he would usually prepare. And uh, uh, he obviously made the Philippines and all that sort of stuff. But look, uh, at the end of the day, when it comes down to the decision, I feel that, you know, the judges gave the fight to Jeff Horn. You know, at the BBA for the fight they gave it against Jeff Horn. So, you know, I'm going to go with the countryman. I'm going to say that, you know, Jeff, Jeff won it because if it wasn't for the commentary of, um, of uh, Teddy Allen, 
do sway a lot of people. See, a lot of people don't understand. But when you listen, to, when you watch a pop and you hear the, the um, uh, and you hear the uh, the commentary, that sways your mind and makes you feel like the other guys winning. So, you know, obviously it's a bit of a controversial decision, but. Look, at the end of the day, Jeff Hall won it. Kudos to him. Um, congratulations to our nation in Australia on having a great world champion. Yeah, I mean, opinion was split. It definitely wasn't. It was the commentary that seemed to swear a lot of people to Pacquiao, but a lot of people had Jeff winning the fight. And um, I guess correct. they'll have the rematch to settle it, probably. Well, I think that's what's going to happen. You're going to see that there's going to be a rematch. I feel that, um, you know, Benny's going to come better prepared, but. It's hard. It, look, the thing is, when you become more champion, it's hard to beat a champion. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's something about when you become more champion, you're sort of on cloud nine. But I don't, I don't feel that Jeff Horn's going to have a long, long career because he's in a lot of wars. You know, so I'm not sure what his resistance will be like for the next couple of years. But I mean, if he can get past Manny Pacquiao, then that's going to open some amazing doors. But if he can't, then I think you're going to still see him in some good fights. But you know, he's going to be on the B side. Yeah, he's certainly a good fighter to watch with his style anyway. Well, Billy, thanks very much. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to add or say for the fans? Well, I just want to say thank you very much for having me on your station. I, I really appreciate the support. And, um, uh, you know, tune in to uh, Showtime on uh, July the 29th. Paul, Mikey Garcia and myself. Um, it's going to be a fantastic show. And uh, to all the fans out there, you know, thank you very, very much. And, if you guys are interested in following the journey, you can follow me at Billy Dip on Twitter and at Billy Dip on Instagram. So, you know, the future is exciting and I'm um, looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks to you, man. We really, really appreciate you giving us some of your time. And uh, you and Mikey are going to be on the podcast next Tuesday as well, so everyone can stay tuned for that. And check out the website at rapsontv.com and follow at Raps on TV on all social media. Again, thanks very much, Billy. We really do thanks appreciate so it. Cheers. Yeah, you too, man. Cheers. Bye.